Hall of Famer Deion Sanders being introduced at the University of Colorado in Boulder as the next head coach. And we welcome to the show one of the greatest athletes that the university has ever seen. This guy, uh, whether it's uh, football or on a mountain, is just absolutely incredible. Jeremy Bloom joins the show. Jeremy, who was in the building yesterday for that very exciting moment. First of all, Jeremy, thank you for being here. What was that like and what are you feeling, Jeremy, that you could just feel the passion and the excitement from the fans? It was really an awesome moment. I mean, I feel like there's only one human being on the planet, on planet Earth, that could energize Boulder and the fan base of the University of Colorado like Dion has done. And everybody who left that, that press conference said, that was the most unusual, exciting press conference they had ever been at. And I've spoken to, to folks who've covered the team for 30, 40 years. So, you know, we're coming, Boulder's coming, and Dion put us back on the map. Is that how you feel, Jeremy? Obviously, it's this year was very, very lean. Uh, I think uh, I did a, a bit of quick math. I think the, the university's like 24 and 42 over the last six seasons. So it's it's been tough. But do you feel like instantly, though, University of Colorado is a player again on a national uh, on a national level here? You're right. The, the program had flatlined. I mean, there, there wasn't even a heartbeat. And, and on October 2nd, when Carl Durrell was let go, I had one guy in mind, and it was Deion Sanders. And, and I called Rick George, the athletic director. I said, Rick, we got to go get Deion. He's the only guy that can overnight make this program relevant again. And I, I've respected Dion for a long time. I'm, I'm a multi-sport athlete, football and skiing. He is the reason I wanted to ski in, in the Olympics and, and play in the NFL. But I didn't know anything about him as a coach until he got Travis Hunter to commit to Jackson State. I mean, Travis Hunter was the number one recruit in the nation. I mean, Travis had offers from Alabama, Georgia, you name it. And I was like, wow, that is some serious recruiting power. Look, it, it's, a, it's a new chapter. It's a new day. Throw the records out the door. Throw the past two decades out the door. It's going to be fun and exciting to watch. Jeremy, when you put that out there, when you said, we got to go get Dion, were they receptive right off the bat? Yeah, uh, right off the bat. And, and look, I, I knew it was going to be a long shot to get Dion Sanders, who grew up in Florida, yeah. lived in Texas, missed to the snow of Colorado, right? Mm -hmm. And and so I, the, on October 2nd, I called Steve Smith, former Carolina Panther. I called Brandon Marshall, former Denver Bronco, Sean Merriman, and, and Myron Roll, four of my really good friends who I knew Dion highly respected. And I said, will you call Dion right now or text him and say, we want him here at Colorado and ask him if he would take a meeting with, uh, with Rick George. And so those four guys helped a ton. I think that made it legitimate for Dion. He and I were just talking about it yesterday. He's like, dang, man, I didn't know Colorado had so much clout. I was getting all these calls from all my buddies. And, and so, but, but Rick did the hard work. I mean, getting him here, getting the contract done, getting the, the, the money to get him paid. Uh, Rick deserves all the credit in the world. Certainly he's uh, done an incredible job, Jeremy, but you too. I mean, it sounds like you really played a big part in this happening. It really does. Dion and I were laughing about it yesterday. He's like, oh, so, so you're the puppet behind the, you're pulling all the puppet strings. Uh, but, but it was cool, man. I got to meet the whole family. And, and, and like I said, I idolized him growing up. I mean, he was, he was my guy. Like my mom and I were laughing about it last night because I wanted to change my name to Dion when I was 12, like real story. So to have him at Boulder and to have the world come full circle, uh, I'm just so excited for all Colorado fans, all college football fans. This is good for college football, whether you like the Pac-12, whether you like Colorado, uh, and, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. So bring your popcorn because the, the movie's coming to theater soon. <laughs> it's, it's already exciting. <laughs> Right. Well, Jeremy, what's the what's the ceiling? What, what 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 is there a cap to what Dion can accomplish in Boulder or or is or is there not? Is it national championships that can be won? Not not saying next season, but in the future. They asked them yesterday at the press conference. They said expectations have never been higher here, including in 19, 1990 when they won the national championship. Are you stressed about that? Are you worried about that? He said, baby, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm not worried. And, and, and so look, the sky is the limit. I mean, look, th this is a game of talent. The more talent you can get to a university, the better chance you, you have to be successful. It, it's no surprise why Alabama wins almost every year and LSU and Georgia, they get all the five-star recruits. So if Deion Sanders can continue this trend of bringing four and five-star recruits, both from high school, but through the portal. I mean, the portal opened on Monday and it's lighting up 
for the University of Colorado. If he can bring the talent here, and I think he can, the sky's the limit. There, there is no barrier in which what the University of Colorado football team can accomplish next season and beyond. And Jeremy, thank you so much uh, for, for your time. Uh, this was incredible. I cannot wait to watch. Uh, I probably wouldn't have said that three days ago about Colorado. You wouldn't have. <laughs> I, but here, are, here we are now, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you, Michael. My pleasure.